I'm going to share with you a couple strategies that you can do to kind of create the momentum in your organization. Just very simple things to start to really start to create the focus, the broaden focus, as well as the you know, focusing in on the problems and not worrying about the solution and kind of the iterate, iteration uh, that's required for innovation. So you know, the whole notion here is we want to disengage autopilot. Disengage autopilot. So it's not easy because when I was doing a, um, when I was writing my book, I went to Amazon and I, I use a lot of, um, I use this notion of surprise. So when we tried Prop Rocks, there's an element of surprise there because it challenges assumptions. Well, I decided to do a, a search on Amazon for business books with surprise in their titles. 100% of them. How do you avoid, minimize, prevent, reduce surprises in business? But you guys want surprises. That's what you need to do. So, you know, business says no surprises. Wall Street doesn't want surprises. No one wants surprises. But you've got to build in the ability to discover, surprise yourself, look for things you didn't expect in order to come up with some of these ideas. And so it's all about kind of trying on that crazy hat and doing, and doing something new. So here's some strategies that other companies use. Um, one of them is really getting close to the customer. It's kind of a no-brainer, the consumer. Um, Intuit does something called Follow Me Homes, which you know, I know a lot of CPG companies do that too. You just go, you know, go in the environment of the consumer. Observe them, like Kimberly Clark did with that toilet paper. Um, the other kind of interesting thing is uh, what they do, though, is what they call customer office hours. Now, what this is is that they actually have asked everyone in their entire company um, to innovate. So literally everybody, from the HR group to, to finance to legal as well, um, innovate. And so in order to innovate, what they do is they, they want to have what they, they call customer office hours, where they actually, if you're, if you're a, a technologist or an engineer and you're working on an idea, you need validation or input from customers to know that it's good. These can be internal customers or external customers. They bring in external customers once a month. Kind of a set, set like this, they come up, they just sit here, and people who are working on anything can just be out there and interact with them. There's no agenda. You come with your ideas. You're essentially making the customer available to those who are innovating on a regular basis so that there's a constant interplay of insights, ideas, what do you think about that, what do you think about this, would this work, would that work, What's, what are you doing, and you know, what problems do you have over here? And it's this constant dialogue around customer insights, direct customer insights. So that's one thing, and it's really about uncovering those pain points. Number two, anybody try one of these uh, Coke machines? Yeah, it's a def definitely a different experience. Um, what I think not a lot of people know is that when you go up to this vending machine, it's a, it's a new Coke dispenser, you go up, it has 100 different flavors, you, you press the, you choose what you want, and as soon as you choose what you want, on the back end, the corporate marketing group in Atlanta, they know what you just, what you just did. It's a constant read on what consumers are, are drinking, basically. It, it's market intelligence, real time. Well, Coke wasn't in the market intelligence business. They were a dispense, you know, they had dispensers, mechanical dispensers. Well, what they did is they hired the head of Xbox to then build out their capability. So it's really about looking at the different perspectives you might need if you're going after a tough problem or a solution and making sure you're bringing that in. It could be an internal perspective or it can be an external perspective. But it's constantly saying, we don't have to have all the expertise right here or in my brain. How can we plug in these different uh, capabilities? Simplify while adding benefits. Is anyone addicted to the NutriBullet like I am? A few of you, yeah. So the NutriBullet, is a, you could say it's a blender, but basically it's, it's a cup, and all you do is you, you put stuff in it, you screw it on, you flip it over, on, so that's up, the cup is upside down there with the stuff in it, and you turn it on, it blends it up, makes your smoothie. You take off the cup, and the cup is actually, the, the, the holder for all the stuff is actually the cup you drink out of. So it's, and then when you wash it, you just stick everything, including the blade, in the dishwasher. So it's just a blender, but they have simplified the whole process so that essentially you've got the cup, you just stick it on there, you drink it, you're done. 
So they've simplified things while adding features. I mean, how many blenders are cups? So essentially, the idea is that as you think about the experiences you're trying to provide people, simple is a really good thing. But as you simplify, there are opportunities to add benefits uh, at the same time. Um, and then measure what matters.